Many of us slip into worshipping false gods, money, work, possessions, fame, when we turn our attentions away from God and let these things come before him. Anytime we give anyone or anything the glory and honor that should be given to God, we're in danger of breaking God's word, first commandment, when we love and obey God and God alone, because he promises that if we do so, he will be our God and we will be his people. Amen? So God had to cleanse the Israelites of their impurities. And some of those things that we, um, when you think about the impurities, you think when he brought you out, he's feeding you on manna, so you're getting good food inside of you, but you still got some mess on you. I remember, and I know that there's people in here, I was brought up in the church. My mother was a preacher. My grandmother was a preacher. My uncles were preachers. But there came a time when I decided that I wanted to rebel. So I'd be at the club on a Friday night, Saturday night, sometimes Monday night and Tuesday night. Listen, I saved, but I was not always that way. And the fact is that we need to be acknowledged that that's where we were, we're coming from. I was not born in Holy Ghost water and kept all the way all my life. I messed up and I had to come back to God. But let me tell you something. I'd be in the club on a Friday night, sometimes on a Saturday night until 2, 3 in the morning. But because I was brought up in church, Sunday morning I'd be putting on my clothes and coming to church, walking in. And we had a mother in our church, and my son would testify, Mother Spence. Mother Spence passed away just before the pandemic. Mother Spence, every day Mother Spence used to say, I am working my way. She'd say, I'm working for my crown. I'm going to glory. But Mother, you'd come in the church, and Mother Spence would say, Gracie, come here. You understand? Because no matter how much I washed up, cleaned up, put on hat, suit, good shoes, walk in church, looking, looking sanctified, there was an eye that could see right inside me and say, get to the altar. You understand? Mother Spence. And if Mother Spence wasn't there, there were a few others that would do the same thing. The same way the children of Israel had been messed up, they had been tainted by the Egyptian uh, environment. They'd been in the mess. They'd been in the water of the Egyptians. And so when they came out, God had to say, clean up. Yeah? You might not be praying to those gods, but you still got those gods inside your heart. You still got the gods of gold and jewelry and money and all kinds of things. The lust in your heart is still there. So we need to clean up. Like the prodigal son, if you remember, we're going jumping into the New Testament. But the prodigal son was out there mixing with pigs, unclean things. When he came back home, the father was waiting for him, just like God waits for us. But when he came home, what did he do? Wash him up, put on a new coat on him, dress him, in, clothe him in righteousness, and then you can come close. God didn't say, stay away from me. God said, clean him up. Give him a new coat. Give him, that's how God is with us. We come boldly before the throne of grace with repentant hearts and watch God work it out in our hearts. But we had to be repentant. So when you return to God, we need to be purified. When I think back, and I, when I thought, when I, was, when I was thinking about ministering today, you know what came to my heart? Some of the songs that I used to listen to now, I'm going to tell you this, but when you hear it, just switch off and listen to what I'm going to say afterwards. There was a song that my husband and I used to dance to called Stealing Love on the Side. And we would be in the club dancing to this. And even the last full conversation I had with him before he passed away, we were talking about, um, I was talking about it because he called me that morning, that Friday morning. And I had been listening to Omega and what I was listening to was Carleen Davis singing Praising God all the time. And I said to him, you know something, this is the most appropriate time for you to call because there is this song that has just come on and I told him, he said, I haven't heard it. And I sent it to him. But somehow or other, stealing love all on the side became praising God all the time. 
So what used to trigger one response now triggers something else that is praise unto Almighty God. We need to cleanse, purify even that which we listen to. And I thank God for Carleen Davis because that was one of my favorite songs. And it is now one of my favorite songs because I can praise God to it and not go back into the old ways, but lift up a, a, a hand of praise and a voice of glory unto Almighty God. Do you understand what I'm saying this morning? Amen. So I'm thanking and that's an opportunity for a praise break right there because God gives us the opportunity to turn what seems like darkness into light. Amen? Amen. God speaks many ways to the children of men by conscience, by providence, by his voice. And we need to take note of every way that God speaks to us. Well, hey, he might speak to Evangelist Natalie. He might not speak to me in the same way, Evangelist Natalie. I have a friend that constant when she got saved, she said, you shouldn't be wearing lipstick. You shouldn't be wearing makeup. You shouldn't be wearing this. You shouldn't be wearing that. And I said, God didn't talk to me about those things. No, I don't really kind of, I'm not really kind of, but I was never somebody that put on a lot of makeup and all of those things. Whereas Barbara, Barbara used to have six, seven, eight chains. She has all like eight holes on every side of her ear the, the jewelry, the makeup and all the rest of it and I said God is speaking to you because those things were your gods when you were in the world so God might not speak to me about those because they were never important to me so each of us needs to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling we need to ask God God what is it that you want me to do you understand? there are some times I will get dressed in the morning and the Lord will say put a hat on I put it on. There's times that I get dressed in the morning and God says, uh-uh, don't put that on. You have to be attuned to the voice of the Lord. Because believe me, he will lead you, guide you, and direct you. He speaks to us in many ways. By conscience, by providence, by voice. And we need to listen and be attuned to the voice of God. Amen? So as he spoke the Ten Commandments, God speaks now. Excuse me, please. <coughs> God had given the law before to man, but it had been written in their hearts. And sin so defaced it <clears throat> that it was necessary to revive the knowledge of it. So here comes God to reiterate that which he had taught. The law is spiritual and takes knowledge of the secret thoughts, desires, and dispositions of our hearts. The law is spiritual. It takes notice of the heart. You understand? Man may make laws and we obey the laws. Man doesn't make laws that's about the contents of our heart. And so we will do things and it looks as if we're doing good, but our intentions are not godly. They're not worthy. Amen? God notes the contents of our heart. And its greatest demand from the commandments of God is love which without outward obedience is mere hypocrisy. It requires us to operate in love, to walk in love, to be unfailing and constant in our obedience of the law of God. Amen? Amen. So it says, whosoever shall keep the law and yet offend in one point is guilty of all. Thank you, Daniel. God bless you. You just open it for me. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. God merely spoke and he tells us of our duty to him and he emphasizes that our maker is a God of love. The first commandment that he gave concerns the object of worship, Jehovah. We worship Jehovah and him alone. Amen? Worship of creatures is forbidden. We're not to worship things reverence things be grateful to things i hear people often say nowadays i thank mother earth mother earth did not give me nothing god gave me all that i have you understand we worship the created more than we worship the creator we need to get back to basics set our house in order 
The second commandment refers to the worship that we render to the Lord. It's forbidden to make any image, idol, or worship any creature, image, or picture. But the spiritual importance of this command extends further. All kinds of superstition is forbidden as well. You understand? Sometimes we get a little bit caught up in superstitious worship. We get caught up in superstitious beliefs and actions. We need to point our eyes, turn our eyes back to the Lord. This is of particular importance in a time when people worship pop stars. They worship sportsmen and women. They reverence politicians and presidents and prime ministers and all of these people, they become so important to our lives. Diego Maradona was a reverenced footballer. Pele was reverenced. Muhammad Ali, I love Muhammad Ali, but ain't worshipping him. Especially you don't worship my God. You understand? But sometimes we get caught up in the worship of people and don't see that we're doing it. When we get so obsessed with our politics, our political party, our football team, our this. Right at this moment, the worship of football, soccer as you know it, in England, is so, it holds the British people in such a trap that England lost their match yesterday to France. The fact that they lost the match was bad enough. The fact that they lost it to France, who are seen as enemies almost to Britain, was, makes it even worse. But you know what makes it even worse? As a probation officer working in England, was the fact that every time a team or a con our country lost a football match, domestic violence in the UK would escalate sometimes 50, 100% reports of domestic violence. Women being hit, women being battered, women being killed, women having to escape domestic violence shelters getting an influx of people because the reverence for football was such that it turned men's heads to the point where they hated their wives and took out on their loved ones their anger that their team did not win. What a state to be in. That's how twisted and distorted our worship of things has become that we have turned away from God and the godly order that says you love as he loves. Amen? We need to be aware of just what we give our affections to and how much of that affection distorts the love that we should have of God. So, the third commandment concerns the manner of worship that it be with all possible reverence and seriousness. False oaths. Sometimes we swear things to God that have nothing to do with him. We take God's name in vain. I, I, I said the other day that I am not an OMG kind of person. And I don't care whether you think it's, oh my goodness, the way that it has been used means I don't use OMG. Because even that I see as slighting God in the way we do it. Because we might mean it in one particular way, but why mess with it? Let me just say, goodness gracious, what happened? Yeah? Look at how you use words. Do not use the Lord God's name in vain. And then the fourth commandment, I'm coming down, says, remember. Remember means that you've been told before. Remember is a reminder that I'm taking you back somewhere, something that I've told you already. Remember the seventh day. To keep it holy. Six days are for business. Now I am not going to get into whether the seventh day is Saturday, whether Sabbath is Saturday or Sunday. I ain't into that because let me tell you something. Jesus died so that we can be free from the chains of the old law. Now that doesn't mean to say that we don't obey the law, but to be tied to a day and I'm not going to preach against anything, what God says is keep the Sabbath day holy. Keep a day that is sanctified unto God, where you worship the Lord, where you rest from your labor, where you just have time that you can just let the Holy Spirit just minister to you. Because the reality is, and I found it even more since I came to America, I said when I came here, I'm not going to get in. I'm going to move to Florida and be the kind of person who never sees the sea. 
Most Floridians don't see the sea from one beginning of the year to the end because people are working one job, two jobs, three jobs just to be able to keep head above water. I'm going to trust God to keep me. I'm going to work and I'm going to rest in him. Because the fact is that we can become so busy praying for the job, praying for this, praying for that, that you're too tired or just don't have the day or the time to take yourself into the house of God. Remember the assembling together of the saints. Come together to worship. Come together for refueling. This is like a fuel stop for children of God. Come to the house. Get joy from one another. Iron sharpens iron. When I see you, I want to smile, Sister Miriam. When I say Sister Sharon, I just want to hug. You understand? Let us take joy in being in the presence of saints. Amen? So remember the Sabbath. It was a, 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 something that God set the example for right at the very beginning of the book. On the seventh day, he rested. Find your seventh day and rest. Rest in his presence. Let there be peace in your home. Spend a little time with your children. Spend a little time with your husband and with your wife, with your sweetheart. Now, we need, we need Holy Ghost sweetheart in the talk of God. All right. Spend a little time with the right one. Amen? Amen. And I'm just going to close off with, because um, I'm jumping, and this is a teaching. It's a, it's, 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 it's a trip through the Bible. It's not a jump up word, but it is still the word. Respect your parents. Exodus 20 verse 12. To respect our parents means that our words, actions, and attitudes should always be positive towards them. We should show them kindness, appreciation, and love our entire lives. As children, we obey our parents, and as adults, we need to show them respect and common courtesy. One of the things that I find so hard to understand is that my mother, who will be 91 in 11 days' time, lives with me and has lived with me for the last nine years. And people constantly comment about, oh, you know, I love the way that you look after your mother. And isn't it wonderful? And I think, well, what is so strange about it? That's how I was raised. That's how we were taught. We honor our parents. We love them. Sometimes they do things that we don't like. They say things that we don't like. They show us up in ways that we really, really don't like. Like, I was coming in the elevator this morning and there was a lady and her son came in, just about held the door for me and ran upstairs. And she came on behind and I was holding the elevator because I saw her coming. And she got in and she said, my son, she said, sometimes these children don't have any manners and, you know, you raise them. And I said, mm, we kind of commiserate. And she said, you know, when I was going to church, and this was an Hispanic woman, she said, when she was growing up, her mother only had to look at her. And she said, sometimes the mother would just pinch her. You understand? My mother could look at me. I've been beaten once by my mother in my entire life, and I'm in my 60s now. Once my mother hit me. But my mother would look at me from the back of the... She'd be at the front on the rostrum, and I'd be sitting at the back with all the other preacher kids them making trouble. And one look, and I would shape up, shift myself, and sit well. You understand? My father, he would beat rather than look but my mother just had to look at me. Even though you got the beating, even though you got the pinch or the look, you love them anyway. And I'm hoping that I will love mine so much that my two sons will love me just as much and my grandchildren will love their father just as much. Amen? Amen. My relationship with my father was not always a good one. In fact, most of my life, it was not good at all. But the la my grandmother said to me, I remember she said to me, I did not meet my mother's mother after I left Jamaica until I was 10, 12 years old. And she lived in England for the last four years before she passed away. But always she would say with me, we would walk, she would pull me off the bed at three o'clock in the morning and say, come Gracie, we pray. So three o'clock in the morning, I still wake up. 
because that's how Granny Penny raised me. But I remember that she would say to me, no matter what your daddy said, no matter what your daddy do, love him, treat him good. He will need you. And there came a time. My father passed away in 2016. But the last conversation that he had with me, he said to me, why, you must hate me. And I said, why? By then he'd been calling me, he called me every morning, sometimes four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning, he'd wake up and call me. And this particular day I said, why? He said, the way that I spoil the others and then it's you have to be looking after. And I said, nah, dad, come on, forget that. And I rubbed his bald head and said, let's pray. Let me pray with you before I leave. I was heading four hours away. The next day he became unwell and they called me and said he's not breathing properly. I saw him three days later, but he wasn't able to speak. But the last conversation we had was him saying, acknowledging that maybe he hadn't quite got it right. And me saying, it don't matter. You're daddy and I love you. So when he passed away, I didn't have tears of regret. I had tears of joy for the 93 years that he spent on this earth. And that he did all that he could do as a good father. Might not have got it right. They were raised different to the way that we are. And we are raising our children, recognizing the, the errors that our fathers and mothers may have made. But the, the thing is, the good thing is, that you set a good example and that you establish your house in the way that the Lord said. Amen? So... How do we apply these commandments and directions from the Lord to our lives today? Then as now, God expects order in the house, in our homes, in our churches, in our lives. Order. Godly order requires us to acknowledge the kingship of our sovereign Lord, to respect and honor the set man of the house, our fathers, husbands, pastors, employers. So in this house, Bishop Jonathan Wayne Manning is the set man over this house. And we honor him as being appointed by God to do the work of God. Amen? That's godly order. God requires us to operate in integrity in all that we do. We don't do one good thing here and then go home, get in the car, cuss your wife. That don't work. Disrespect your husband. That don't work. Don't come into the church and put on one show. I was raised and I used to see people that wouldn't speak to each other. They'd come out two different cars, not speaking, mouth push up and all kinds of things. Get in church. They wouldn't sit together, but then come time for certain things and it would be deacon so-and-so and sister so-and-so standing together. The devil is a liar. Let your actions and your heart be ones of integrity unto God. Amen? Everything you do, do it with integrity. It means ensuring that we wash off every trace of Egypt in our hearts and in our lives. Our speech, our thoughts, our actions, and our worship must be right. It's a challenge, but it's not impossible. When we realize that the intention behind every Christ is love. That God gave instructions to the Egyptians because he loved them and he wanted them to be close to him. He created us for his glory. He created us because he loved us and therefore he wants the very best from us. As parents, we set up our homes in such ways that we set godly order in the house. You can tell when daddy's away and children play but you come back and there's order in the house. I remember my children used to go and play with certain friends and the friends did not have order in their home. So when you came back, you had to reestablish these are the rules in this house. We had a sign on the wall, a picture on the wall. It said, Christ is the head of this house. The unseen guest at every meal and the silent listener to every conversation. That is the sign over the door of Omega. That is the sign over our ministry and that is the sign that we must have in our lives. Christ is the head 
of this house. He's the unseen guest at every meal that I partake of and the silent listener to every conversation and thought that I have. Amen? So it's not jump up time. It's organize ourselves. It's worship God time. Amen, folks. Amen. Amen. Let's give God the glory this morning. Let's give him the praise. And let us do unto him that which he deserves and desires. I give God praise for you this morning. And anyone that is listening this morning who feels as if they need to draw closer to God, that you don't need to do any great leaps or somersaults. All you have to say is, Father God, I have not always walked in the path that you've set for me. I surrender to you this morning. I surrender every stain and every weight that besets me, and I desire to just serve you and to love you. If there's anybody in the house this morning that does not know God as their savior and wants to draw closer, I invite you to lift your hands this morning. And if you're someone who has known God, has surrendered your heart to the Lord, and you feel as if you've been drifting away, all I would say is draw near, draw near. Thank you, Father. Thank you for each and every one that has listened this morning. Thank you every, for each person that is present and also present by internet, by Facebook, by YouTube. Whatever way they may hear this word this morning, may they hide the word in their hearts as Mary did and let them hide it, God, so that they may not sin against you. We love you and we give you the praise and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.